this should be a fun discussion. On September 10th, 2024, we got a first look at the latest piece of hardware. Serves as a mid-gen upgrade to the PlayStation 5, the PlayStation 5 Pro. Mark Cerny introduced us to the big three that promises to push the limits of the existing and future titles on the platform. Now, I want to give you guys my immediate impressions of this right off the bat. It's probably the most underwhelming reveal of a new console, mid-gen or not that I've ever seen. But there is a good reason for that, and it's not necessarily PlayStation's fault. I mean, yes, it is in a couple ways, but let me give you guys some perspective regarding those big three features, as well as provide my own critiques about the console. So you have a better understanding of like how weird the situation is with the PlayStation 5 Pro right now. So first thing, a larger GPU. Graphics are naturally the priority for a new console upgrade. It gives developers the means to put more detail into their games. Additionally, faster memory and more rendering allow for more detail at a smoother frame rate, typically targeting 60 frames per second. Now, I love a smooth frame rate, but I will say that I can totally tolerate 30 frames per second or fluctuating. Understandably, though, not everyone likes 30 frames per second or an inconsistent frame rate like you would see in games such as Elden Ring on either platform, Xbox or PlayStation. But focusing more on like visual details for a moment, because this is kind of one of the weird things for this console generation. For me, I think big improvements on graphics with each new console generation was like a spectacle. It was like the jump from Halo 2 to Halo 3. Everything looked detailed, super cleaned up. And that was because there was just so much room for improvement back in the day with technology and whatnot. Nowadays, and I might kick myself in the future for this take, but it feels like we've really hit the ceiling when it comes to how good a game could look. Like I'm playing Astro Bot like right now and I can't really imagine how better the game could look from that point on. I think it's ultimately a good thing that I have this type of observation about it, but it does mean I get less of a whoa feeling and more of like a wow. And I don't know if that makes any sense. I hope it does. Second feature, advanced ray tracing. So ray tracing is all about adding more details through simulation of lighting. So we're talking about reflections, refractions of light in the scene at any given point in time. Like how there's reflections in the water or how shadows are cast. Also, Tanuki member Naya mentions about the reflections on Astrobot's helmet, you know, as an example of ray tracing. It can look absolutely amazing and can give games more realism and immersion if done well. Having said that though, as someone who's grown up with video games that didn't have any of this, it's not really a deal breaker for me if it doesn't have ray tracing. I have seen some bad shadows in my time, but I wouldn't say inaccurate shadows take away from the experience for me. But you know, to each their own. The third feature, AI-driven upscaling. It's a bit of a buzzword these days, but it is the use of machine learning to take existing images and sharpening them up to improve on the clarity of things, both increasing the detail of the shot as well as the frame rate of the game while also taking the load off of the GPU. So PlayStation is calling their AI upscaling PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, or PSSR, or the pisser. <laughs> now, developers have been using upscaling before. One of the examples would be Returnal, where it's originally 1080p resolution, and then it's upscaled to 4K. For the PS5 Pro, the pisser, will work on adding more detail in supporting these games to maintain 4K resolution, possibly even higher. Like, maybe 8K? We'll see. Now, I think AI-driven upscaling is actually a pretty useful tool here in tackling, like, the current demand for, like, higher quality games. Though it is true that some games, like, you're playing may not reflect the native resolution of 4K or higher. It does sharpen though what can otherwise be a blurry visual. Now blurry visuals for me aren't really like a big thing. I mean I guess to be fair I do play a lot of Switch games and sometimes it's really on the 720p like resolution handheld mode. However I did notice a lot of the fuzzy details when playing Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth in its performance mode. Now we talked about all three features and I've thrown my two cents about the significance of them in the gaming experience but those aren't actually the problems with the Pro. PlayStation 5 Pro. The issues actually start with what was shown. The first party PlayStation games, they're good for advertising for the brand, but it felt like a lot of them didn't really need to be in that demonstration because they already look good. <laughs> now, obviously, when you put them side by side, you do see the difference like in the gameplay. And, and that's also like with zooming in on everything. But I, it's just such a minuscule like improvement to them. Instead, a game that would easily convince folks to upgrade would probably be that uh, comparison video with the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth visuals. I mean, it was featured there, but I felt like that was the most dramatic in the comparison because it is pretty blurry with that game. Also, Black Myth Wukong, Elder Ring, would also greatly benefit from the increased frame rate uh, provided with the PlayStation 5 Pro. We're not even talking about future games right now. If PlayStation actually 
coupled the promised visuals and the performance with more upcoming games during the initial announcement that would have stuck with people and that would have had a bigger impact yes we had state of play and it did show more games coming to the playstation 5 and being boosted by it but you know even with the updated roster they're not advertising it well with their promo video slash montage like they're not showing the gameplay at times they're not including comparison shots when it would absolutely be great if they did i mean yeah you can you, you could totally have a montage just, you know, I don't think they really have convinced us yet, or I guess me, I guess, suppose. Of course, we do have to address the price point. $700 for a digital PlayStation 5 Pro, $80 disk drive, and a $30 vertical stand sold separately as existing products under the PlayStation's ecosystem. That could be used for both the PS5 Slim model and also this PS5 Pro. I could actually appreciate the existing accessories being used for both consoles, but to have a base price of $700, and not include either that's like well that's asking a lot <laughs> i believe i spoke about this in my ps5 slim video but all playstation 5 models uh, from the original to the pro really promote this upright position for the console the idea of like you know that's how the console should look to a certain point making it go horizontal kind of feels less appealing so you feel a little bit more tempted to get this vertical stand and the disc drive there there wasn't much advertisement for that on the pro but the, the sheer lack of a disk drive at the very beginning of the PS5 Pro is such a big disappointment, both to like physical collectors, but also the existing owners of the PS5 who already have this physical collection on them. This isn't really about the preservation of games, moreover, it's actually alienating an existing demographic of players in the PS5 space for having a digital console as the only $700 option. In another way, it's almost like punishing them too. If you want to move up to that and you still have the physical preference because it costs you $80. Now I understand that the pro at this point is gonna be serving a different demographic of players who want that best console experience and have the funds to own one and probably the other accessories. Still though, I personally believe that $700 is just a lot, especially with the price hike being attributed to the upgrade SSD from one terabyte to two. That is actually a very nice upgrade, I have to admit. I still stand by what I said. So in summary, the PlayStation 5 Pro promises the best console experience for both the first party and supporting third parties. The focus on graphics, ray tracing, AI upscaling certainly will make existing and upcoming games look great, more realistic, but you may see diminishing returns on those games, especially since they look so good already. Top it off with the $700 price tag that costs extra for the additional accessories and you find yourself in PC spending territory. I'm, I'm not gonna open that can of worms, <laughs> but I will say if you're trying to get the best console experience in 2024, I think the PlayStation 5 Pro and the features that it promises offer a lot of potential for the current generation. Otherwise, if the Pro is too expensive or you just feel that your current PlayStation 5 is enough, definitely save for something else. Maybe Legend of Zelda themed Nintendo Switch Lite and possibly a copy of Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom? Well, we actually have a video right here talking about why Nintendo is actually pushing for a Switch Lite in 2024. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like the video and subscribe to Tanuki Media. We'll see you guys in the next one.